All right, in this video, we're going to factor these two trinomials. There is a little tiny bit of difference that these two trinomials have two variables in it, x and y. Whereas in the last videos, uh, the trinomials only had one variable, just x. But the point is that the techniques that we learned for factoring trinomials also work in these situations where the trinomials have two variables. So let's see how that goes. So for our first one here, 6x squared plus xy minus 2y squared. Just as before, we're going to find our sum and product. The sum is the value of b. In this case, uh, there really is a value of b there, even though it may not look like there is. The value of b is 1, right? Positive 1. So our sum has to turn out to be 1. The product is 6 times negative 2, which is negative 12. So let's think about what two numbers have a product of negative 12 and a sum of 1. I think uh, we could take maybe 4 and negative 3. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. 4 plus negative 3 is positive 1. So our strategy, just like before, is we're going to break up this middle term, which is 1xy, and we're going to break it up into 4xy minus 3xy. This term here, 6x squared, is going to stay still, and so is the minus 2y squared. So like I said, 1xy becomes positive 4xy minus 3xy, and minus 2y squared is trailing along on the end, unchanged. So we haven't changed anything, right? This, this line is still the same as this line. 4xy minus 3xy is exactly equal to 1xy. So that is the same. Now, what's our strategy now? We want to factor, common factor, each one of these pairs, OK? And again, don't be writing any brackets here, because if you do that, you'll be introducing an error into your work. For this first pair, we have a 6 and a 4. We can pull out a 2 there. And we have two copies of x there and one copy of x there. We can pull out an x, therefore. But there is a y here, but not there, so we cannot pull out a y. So what goes in these brackets? Well, 2x times what gives me 6x squared? That would be 3x. And 2x times what gives me 4xy? That would be 2y. Now, how about over here? Well, between 3 and 2, the only common factor there is 1. So there's no real number I can pull out. But I do have a copy of y in both of those, so I can pull out a y. Now, how do I write the y? Do I just write it like that? No way. I need some sign in front of y, either plus or minus. Since there's a minus on both, I really want to factor out a minus y, or if you like, a minus 1y. Then, what goes in brackets? Well, minus y times what gives me minus 3xy. That would be a positive 3x, right? And minus y times what gives me a minus 2y squared? That'd be a plus 2y. And now notice that since we have the same quantity, 3x plus 2y in both of these brackets, that's a sign that everything is going good. And we can pull that to the front now. So 3x plus 2y is my common factor now. And what do I have left in brackets? 2x minus y. And that's our factor trinomial. We're done. So notice the same technique, sum and product, with this technique of factoring by grouping works even when there's two variables, right? And let's see how this one goes now. x squared minus 8xy plus 15y squared. So here the sum is what? Should be what? And the product should be what? Well, the sum is the value of b. b is not 8, right? b is negative 8. And the product is 1. There's a hidden 1 there, times 15. a times c. 1 times 15 is 15. So what two numbers add up to negative 8 and multiply to 15? Well, there's not too many ways to multiply to 15. We have 1 times 15 and 3 times 5, basically. Using 1 and 15, there's no way to get 8. So I think it's going to have to be 3 and 5. And both of these should be negative, right? Let's check. Excuse me. Let's check it. Negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15. Negative 3 plus negative 5 is negative 8. Now, should I break this up? And write, instead of minus xy, break it up as minus 3xy, minus 5xy. And then do factoring of each of those pairs like I did over here. I could. I definitely could. But remember what we learned that if there's a 1 in front here, uh, we can actually go directly to the answer. We can do that shortcut, right? How is that going to work in this situation where there's two variables? Well, it's basically the same. We'd have our x's here. And before, we'd have like minus 3, minus 5. 
Where did I get those? Well, they just come from right here, right? And then I'd be done. But since there's an extra variable y here, all I have to do is put a y on the end here, and, and that's our factored form, done. So there's no need to go through all these steps over here because we have a one here and we can employ that shortcut. So the main point of this video is that you can use the same technique, techniques of factoring trinomials that we did when there's only one variable in the situation like we have here where there's two variables. This uh, usual method works and the shortcut also works.